Yeah. Thank you very much. My talk today is based on joint work with Svi Rosen, who is a PhD student in Berkeley and graduating uh, next spring. And we posted an, um, the article and archived about three months ago. What direction should I? Bring it your own computer. Or press the button. OK. So the main problem is very simple. Uh, given some entries of a matrix, is it possible to add the missing entries uh, such that the matrix has rank 1, its entry sum to 1, and it is non-negative? Uh, I will explain you the motivation for this question in two slides. So, for example, consider the partial matrix with four diagonal entries, and this has exactly what it has a, a unique completion that has rank 1, the entries are in a negative and sum to 1. And actually, if I would perturb the diagonal entries by a positive epsilon, then the partial matrix wouldn't have a completion anymore. And if I would uh, perturb the entries by negative epsilon, then the matrix would have uh, infinitely many uh, desired completions. Okay. So motivation for this question. So the question was uh, communicated to us by Baron Sturmfels, uh, but it was originally posed by two statisticians, uh, Vishes Karva and Alexandra Slavkovic. And so it's related to independence modeling statistics. Uh, let X and Y be two discrete random variables with M and N states uh, respectively. So this means that probability that X is equal to I and Y is equal to J is equal to the product of um, probabilities X is equal to I and Y is equal to J for all I and J. And these joint uh, probabilities of X and Y can be recorded in a rank one matrix. So this is um, that's the product of the probabilities of X and product of probabilities of Y. And furthermore, all the entries have to be non-negative because probabilities are non-negative and the entries sum to one because uh, all the probabilities of X and probabilities of Y sum to one. Okay. Um, and now, suppose that one knows only some probabilities, or only some probabilities are measurable. For example, uh, this kind of situation could happen um, uh, when a pair of compounds in lab uh, reacts only when in certain uh, states. Okay? And a complete answer to our question uh, would allow us to reject a hypothesis of independence that X and Y are um, independent. So if the matrix can't be completed to rank one matrix. And um, okay. So let's start with a very easy example, a toy example. Uh, given a partial mat uh, matrix um, with diagonal entries A and B, how to decide if this has a completion? Uh, we add an extra entry X, and then the fourth entry is already determined by two by two minors, because rank one means that the, uh, the fourth entry needs to be A times B divided by X. And then we set the sum of entries equal to one. This is equivalent to a quadratic equation. And for this quadratic uh, equation to have a solution, the discriminant has to be non-negative. And together with the condition that a plus b is less or equal than 1, this is uh, uh, sufficient to guarantee that x gives a completion of m. Okay. And these are exactly the shaded re uh, region corresponds to a's and b's. Um, that, uh, such that the diagonal, uh, two times two diagonal partial matrix is completable. Okay. Um, the result for, and how our paper is structured. First, we study diagonal uh, partial matrices, and then we reduce all the other partial matrices uh, to the diagonal partial matrices. And the result for partial matrices is, suppose we have this partial matrix with uh, diagonal entries A1 to AN. And then M is completable if and only if the sum of square roots of AI is less or equal than 1. So what, what happens if you 
don't have exactly n measurements. So if you have less than n, is it always completable or something? Um, greater than n, odds are even smaller? So uh, if you have only uh, some parts of the, if you mean, if you have only part of the diagonal, then you basically have the same condition, uh, that you have to consider that the sum of those, ent uh, the sum of uh, square roots of those entries is, is less or equal than one. Oh, I see, and then you never have uniqueness, but you can still get a non-existent. Exactly, exactly. Actually, on, I think on the next slide, I have um, a result about the dimensions of, um, exactly, and there is, um, there is a unique uh, completion if and only if, if the sum of square roots is equal to one. And in fact, so if the sum of square roots is less than one, then if n is equal to two, then the probability matrix M has exactly two completions. And if n is greater than two, then the set of completions uh, of M is n minus two dimensional. Um, n minus two uh, real dimensional. The n minus two dimensional sphere. So it's so okay. Can, uh, I will show you this picture. So <laughs> consider the three times three uh, partial matrix with uh, the same element, three same elements on the diagonal. And I think, for example. This middle one, uh, let's consider this curve. This means that we have diagonal entries with one tenth, one tenth, one tenth on the diagonal. And the set of col uh, completions corresponds to this curve. Uh, and this curve is uh, projected to the, um, uh, sorry, I haven't introduced u, but you can think that the matrix is a product of a vector u and another uh, vector v transposed, and this uh, corresponds to the two first coordinates of u um, that it's a product of. So the one ninth is the point in the middle. A one ninth is the point in the middle because uh, if you have one ninth, one ninth, one ninth, then the unique completion is where you uh, uh, all the entries of the matrix are one ninth. And remember, we had our toy example. So, 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 so his question was: Was if the if the set is is it's only more to the n minus two sphere? Yes, because it's simp It's basically um, it's a. Uh, Inside, it's basically it's homeomorphic to the simplex, so it's uh, homeomorphic to the uh, sphere. Boundary of yes. 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 Sorry, it's homeomorphic to the boundary of simplex. And how does it relate to the toy example that we did? So for the two times two case, um, to get the inequalities in the first example, we need to square uh, this inequality twice, and then we get two inequalities. The first inequality in the positive orthon corresponds to this region, and we need to add um, another inequality to cut out the correct region of inequality, uh, correct region of completions. And uh, now I get to the general partial matrices. I won't give you rigorous, or I won't explain you uh, all the details, but I rather try to explain on an example uh, what happens. How do we reduce to the diagonal matrices? So first, um, if you have a row or column of um, where none of the entries is observed, or all the entries that are observed are zeros, then we just remove uh, those uh, rows and columns. So we have removed the first uh, row. Now we use two times two minors to uh, fill up uh, all the entries. So if you know more, then we actually want to use universal Kronor basis of uh, um, rank one determinantal variety. But you can also think uh, we consecutively use uh, rank two minors uh, until we can't uh, uh, fill up uh, any further entries. And we also check that there is also no contradiction to the rank one condition. Okay, so then we get to a block diagonal form. And next what we do, each block that we have, we contract to one element. So we contract all the columns and rows corresponding to a block. And add up the corresponding entries in the block. So in this case, we have uh, contracted 
this, uh, the first two columns and the first two uh, rows to single row and single column. And we have added uh, the elements of um, uh, this block. And now it's in fact, in most of the cases, there are a couple of exceptions, but uh, I won't uh, explain you the, uh, the exceptions. Uh, checking if this matrix is completable is equivalent to checking if this partial matrix is completable. And in fact, it is because the uh, sum of square roots of these entries is uh, 0 0.98. That's uh, less than 1. How did you get 0.35? Um, you sum, uh, you uh, sum those four entries. I hope it's. Is it? <laughs> okay. Good. And the theorem for general partial matrices say, says that let M be a feasible partial matrix. By feasible, we mean that none of the um, rank uh, one, the rank one condition is already not uh, contradicted, and also that we don't have this kind of situation where we have 1, 0, 1, because this would be also a contradiction. Um, we couldn't uh, fill out the fourth entry. And, and such that after carefully removing zeros, it has S blocks. And let bi be the sum of the entries in the i block after completing by 2 times 2 minors, our universal Grebner basis. Um, if S equals to 1, then M is completable if and only if, if B1 is equal to 1, and if S is uh, greater than 1, then we um, get the same condition as for a diagonal um, partial matrices, but now the BIs are actually the sum, sums of entries in a block. Okay. And so another example, suppose we have this kind of uh, probability matrix, uh, with all observed entries non-negative, it has completion if and only if, if this uh, sum is less or equal than 1. So we have filled out this entry and then used the diagonal form. Tensors. So this semester tensors are very popular. Um, we can't, so for matrices we can, we can answer the question completely. For tensors, things are more interesting. Um, but we can, uh, we can understand, uh, we can answer the question for diagonal uh, tensors. Suppose that uh, the observed entries in the tensors are d i i dot 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 i, and all the other entries are uh, not observed. And the tensor is of order d, so this means it's two dimensions, two times two times two would be uh, an order three tensor. And then the tensor has a desired completion uh, if and only if the sum of d roots of the observed entries is less or equal than 1. So this is completable to a rank 1 tensor with all entries uh, non-negative? And entries summing to 1, the same conditions. And this corresponds to um, d uh, independent discrete random variables. <coughs> Um, okay, so this was about uh, conditions for completions. Um, now, partial tensors of fixed type, uh, which can be completed to rank one probability tensors, form a semi algebraic set. This follows by Darsky Seidenberg uh, theorem. And b before we had. Um, we had inequalities using uh, roots. It would be also desirable to have uh, descriptions of the semi-algebraic sets as Boolean combinations of polynomial inequalities and equations. And what we can say, that there exists a unique irreducible polynomial f of degree t to the n minus 1. So t was order of the tensor and n was the uh, dimension, in, uh, dimension in one uh, degree um, with constant term one that vanishes on the boundary of 
diagonal partial tensors, which can be completed to rank one uh, probability tensors. And the semi-algebraic description takes the form f is greater or equal than zero. All the coordinates are greater or equal than zero, plus additional inequalities that separate our set from other chambers in the region defined by f greater or equal than zero. So um, if you're confused right now, there will be an example on the next slide. Um, yes, I think so, yes. So when d is 2, mm -hmm. it's 2 to the n minus 1. It's 2 to the uh, n minus 1. And do you know that? Is that a familiar polynomial? Um, so, OK. Let me get to the next slide. <laughs> um, so this is an example for a three, ta uh, three times three partial matrix with A, B, C diagonal entries. And this region is the same as this inequality plus three, these three, actually five inequalities, where S1, S2, and S3 are symmetric uh, polynomials. Okay, and you can see here that this is a degree four polynomial. So in this case, d is two, n is three, and constant term is one. And maybe it's enlightening to see this. <laughs> Let me, okay, remember this picture, I will go back to the previous slide. So um, the previous slide, uh, so the picture corresponds to this region, and we get, in fact, this region if you had the five other inequalities. Okay. So this is similar that we had before, remember, for two times two matrices uh, where there's a region and we needed an extra inequality uh, to cut out the desired region. Okay, so this was about the semi-algebraic sets. Now I come to how to actually uh, find completions uh, for um, partial matrices. Um, if you have only two blocks, then the situation is fairly easy. Uh, first, add in missing entries using two times two minors. And add in a variable x <laughs> and fill out all the other entries using two times two minors. Now set the sum of variables equal to one and solve for x. So in particular, in this example, this uh, yields uh, two different completions. So for um, two variables, it's very uh, relatively easy. Now suppose we have um, n blocks. I'm really thinking of diagonal matrix because um, the rest of the matrices can be um, or we can get to diagonal matrices. So this is um, a completion of this diagonal matrix is given by a U, where T is a solution of this uh, quadratic uh, system. And by U, I mean, again, that our matrix is U times a V transposed, where U and V are vectors. And um, we derived this uh, proposition actually from the proof of uh, completing um, uh, for checking if a uh, diagonal matrix has a complete, uh, completion. And then a another thing that we studied is suppose we have a distance function, for example, Pearson chi squared distance. And uh, remember we had. Um, a result about that there are uh, n minus two, uh, or the solution set, completion set is n minus two dimensional. Maybe we want to find the solution that minimizes a distance function. And uh, do, uh, this can be done using Lag uh, Lagrange multipliers. So this is another place where we are solving a system of polynomial equations. So we solve the Lagrange multipliers um, uh, for, uh, for our polynomial for our uh, partial matrix. And for example, for this matrix, the minimum is achieved at this matrix, and the Pearson chi squared distance is 0 0.683. Okay. 
And now, this is my last slide, so uh, I'm on time. Um, we could characterize diagonal tensors. Uh, the future uh, work with Svierosa and Thomas Kala, we want to understand a better completion for tensors. Um, we also could uh, completely characterize completions of two times two times two tensors. So most of the cases um, restrict are already cases that we know, or we can use flattenings of tensors, and uh, then use completions of matrices to answer the question for tensors. And there is one case um, where we actually had to have to um, add a variable x, and then the corresponding tensor is completable if and only if the equation has a root in the interval of zero, uh, in the interval of from zero to one. And we can also get, um, we can get an inequality for this using uh, Sturm sequences, uh, but I'm not getting into here. And that's all. Last one is not basic. Um, last one is not basic. I don't know. I think it is. I think we believe that all of them, uh, I think we believe that all of them are basic. Why do you believe that? Wishful thinking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know if we believe that, but, <laughs> but we started discussing something with Thomas Kala um, uh, using implicit function theorem, and it seems that it might be that it's basic and uh, important boundaries given by uh, one equation, but this is all work, uh, our future work. Yeah. I don't know what basic means, I'm going to ask what might be the same question. Um, do you know anything about the topology of these slices? Um, no. I mean, you knew one was the sphere. Yes, but this was for the matrices. So for tensors, we don't know very much. Almost nothing. Okay. And that was my last slide and 20 second minute. <laughs> Plenty of time for more questions. You put up a chi squared Pearson something something. Can you say what that means? Um, so this is just basically you can think of this as a distance function. So here um, we want to measure um, or we want to find the completion of this partial matrix that's closest to the um, uniform matrix with respect to the uh, Pearson's chi squared distance. But one can really choose any distance function. Okay. So just sorry to repeat my question, but I mean these polynomials of degree two to the n minus one, they must be some nice sort of God given symmetric functions, right? So this is really the positive orthant of the uh, one um, of the unit ball with respect to the norm uh, one dth norm, right? And I would be very very happy if the semi-algebraic sets of uh, these things are known. Oh, actually, okay, we actually do have the um, we do have the description of that polynomial in our paper. So if you mean just the one. So this is actually in our paper. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm not interested in a formula, but a kind of geometric description like this is, um, you know, polynomial that showed up somewhere before or something as yeah, well, well, characterizing some. Expression some symmetric functions. You need yeah, I mean, it's some. It's got to be some nice symmetric polynomial, right? Can I show you the polynomial yeah, after the talk? Yeah. Okay. Um, if I think it gets, uh, I think it gets easy. Do you find any matrices which have finitely many completions but more than one? Yes. So if you have a two times two diagonal matrix, then um, 
and if the sum of and if the sum of the uh, square roots of diagonal entries uh, entries is less than one, then you always have two completions. Okay. But yes. <laughs> but if you draw the condition of rank one and say rank two. Okay, so so we have one example for rank two in our paper. Uh, rank two, three times three matrices, and seven variables observed. That's the best that we can do. More questions? Well, uh, stop here.